Hey, fourth grade friends, and welcome back to another, another wonderful week in reading. I am Ms. Wozniak, and I'm going to talk this week about making inferences and drawing conclusions in fictional texts. So remember, fictional texts are fake texts, fictional fake, they both start with F. They're stories that aren't true. So what we're going to do is each day we're going to read a fictional story together and we're going to practice making inferences and drawing conclusions together and then i'm going to give you a choice board of different activities that you can do to practice making inferences and drawing conclusions while reading your own fictional book and i'm also going to show you some online resources that you can use to find some fictional books free online that are awesome so we're going to go ahead and get started i'm going to share my screen with you um, and before we dig into our text, let's just review inferring. So we talked about inferring a couple weeks ago. I did a lesson on poetry and inferences. So this week we're going to talk about fictional text, but it's the same thing. When you make an inference, you go beyond the author's words to understand what is not said in the text. So it's like taking clues, what you know, questions you have, and putting it all together to make an inference. It's like a big puzzle piece. So keep that in mind as we're reading the story, those um, shoes today. Also, not every question we pose is going to say, what is the inference, or use the words inference or drawing conclusions, and you never have to know the difference between inferring and drawing conclusions. You just have to be able to use that skill. So that's what we're going to practice this week. And we're going to start today with the book called Those Shoes. So before we even begin reading, we're already making inferences. So immediately you say those shoes and you look at the big picture up here, you see a shoe. And then if you look at these kids down here, you can see all three of these boys have on this shoe. But this little boy does not. And you can tell by his face that he's sad. So I can infer that he's upset that he doesn't have this pair of shoes. So as we read today, I'm going to be asking you some questions. You can pause when I ask the question um, to think about it or to reread the page. It should be big enough for you to see. So this is Those Shoes by Maribeth Bolt. So you can see up here, it says, buy these shoes. And again, it has the picture of the shoes from the cover. So I have dreams about those shoes, black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need grandma says and what you need are new boots for winter brandon t comes to school in those shoes he says he's the fastest runner now not me i was always the fastest before those shoes came along Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom, seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. So we can infer how he's feeling because all these kids have the shoes and he thinks that because of the shoes, this kid's the fastest runner and he thinks because this kid has the shoes. He goes and shows them off every day. So we can infer that he's feeling real left out because he doesn't have those pair of black high tops with the white stripes. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. Then, one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size. Velcro, like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. 
they have an animal on them from a cartoon. I don't think any kid ever watched. So take a second, think about how he's feeling now that he has this new pair of shoes. You can tell by looking at this picture, he's not looking really excited about these new pair of shoes. So we can infer that he's still feeling pretty upset. Even though the author doesn't come out and say he's feeling upset, you can tell because he's making fun of the Velcro on the shoes and saying that he doesn't want this pair of shoes. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T, and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about my dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough. You never know. So using the picture, how's he feeling now? She's saying, let's go check out those shoes. We can also infer, because she says I got a little bit of money set aside, we can infer that maybe grandma doesn't have a lot of money. So that's why he hasn't been able to get the new pair of shoes like everybody else. At the shoe store, grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. The author says, when she sees it, she sits down heavy. What does it mean she sits down heavy? Because she's looking at the price, she sits down heavy. That means she's disappointed that the shoes are so expensive and that they're probably not going to be able to afford them. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid? Oh, let's fix the, the blurriness. There we go. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high top, perfect shape, 250, those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes. At the end of the shoe, oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. So why do you think Jeremy 
was so determined to make those shoes fit, curling his toes. We can infer that he wants them to fit so bad because he just wants to fit in with the other kids. And he cares about what his peers think of him. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them in anyway with my own money and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. We can infer that he's limping because the shoes don't. At home, a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch. I say, Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey's shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks in co the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what? Antonio says, breathing hard. What do you think Jeremy means when he shouts, I'm not going to do it? What does he not want to do? And why does he not want to do it? He's thinking about giving those no, new shoes to Antonio, right? Let's see if we're right. See if we made the correct inference. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them? Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I'm awake for a long time, thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. We can infer that he's trying on his shoes to see if they still fit, or if they fit now, not still fit. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. So what does this tell you that he put the shoes there and ran away? It tells you what inference can you make about Jeremy's character right here. So Jeremy's showing that he is kind because he's doing a random act of kindness by putting the shoes at the door for Antonio. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. 
I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey's shoes. But later, when it comes to recess, comes time for recess, something happens everywhere. There is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. So how can we infer what can we infer about how he's feeling, how Jeremy's feeling right now, that he remembers he has these new boots? We can infer that he's feeling pretty confident in his new boots and thankful because he has a pair of shoes that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. So that was those shoes. I'm going to show you now. You're going to practice the skills of making an inference by choosing one of these activities on the inference choice board. Um, you can use storylineonline.net, the link is right here, to find a fictional story to do or to use to complete one of these activities. So I'm gonna show you really quick. This is what Storyline Online looks like. It's free. This is when you get to this website, you can click on any of these books. Um, so let's see, I'll go to all books up here and there is a ton of books. If you click on the book, so Arnie the Donut, if I wanted to read Arnie the Donut, I can click on it and then it's going to take me so this guy can read it aloud or it will give you some other options down here, um, more videos of where you can see different stories, listen to different stories, or sometimes it'll be books that you can just read on your own and click through. Um, if you haven't read Arnie the Donut, it's actually a pretty good story, so you should check it out. So, I'm really excited to continue this week with you guys. We're going to do the same thing tomorrow. We're going to take a book, we're going to read it aloud, and we're going to make some inferences as we go. So, see you tomorrow.